Hello again, this is Dr. Nimichek of the uh, Nimichek Protocol. And I want to discuss something. It's a little pointer for you. Um, it's something I've called the SIBO symptom fingerprint. All right. Now, when SIBO or small intestine bacterial overgrowth is, as you know, a flux of bacteria from the colon, and now they're living up in the small intestine, you have 10,000 to 100,000 times the bacteria up there. This is my uh, uh, well-known uh, uh, example of the birds living with the fish, all right? <clears throat> now, people are missing very important clues when you treat with rifaximin. It's also known as Zyfaxin in the U.S., Rifagut, Rifaximina, it goes by a lot of uh, names around the world, but the generic is Rifaximin. And you have to pay very careful in the first few weeks after you're finished to help you understand what it did, because those symptoms that improved are gonna be your clue for if it comes back, all right? Now, people will mistakenly look at things like constipation, bloating, and cramping. Often that doesn't go away. Those are actually direct brain problems that take a month to a couple months to, to improve and are not gonna get better with the rifaximin. The rifaximin, the symptoms are gonna get better it might be sporadic diarrhea. Eat and have to go to the bathroom shortly afterwards, what we call postprandial stool urgency. Um, intolerance to specific food. So, you know, very common examples are some people who now uh, can't eat tomatoes or spices. That's from bacterial overgrowth. And when you fix bacterial overgrowth within two weeks, they can suddenly tolerate a lot of tomatoes and spices again. But it could be onions or bananas or lettuce or chocolate or coffee. It could be all sorts of stuff. Um, the food intolerance is not a gluten issue, really. Sometimes it's even a dairy milk sugar issue. That's SIBO, okay? So here's what happens. So you're having some symptoms or you just got brain issues and you're trying to understand what's you know, you're going through my protocol, you get uh, your doctor prescribed you some Rifagut or Rifaximin or, and Zyfaxin, whatever you want to call it. And you take your twice a day for 10 days. And then what you notice in the next few days, you know, week or two even, is, hey, I can eat bananas again. Or, hey, my abdominal pain went away. Or, hey, you know, that eat and gotta go pattern I have where I thought it was just real regular, but. I was having a bowel movement three or four times a day. That's normalized down to maybe once a day. Or some people are, my extreme fatigue drops. My anxiety or OCD dramatically improves. My psoriasis or eczema greatly improves. This within the first couple weeks after taking rifaximin, you gotta make note of those symptoms and what gets better because that's your fingerprint. Because if in a year, say you get some antibiotics for pneumonia and they knock your gut bacteria back out of balance, those exact symptoms are gonna come back. If you couldn't tolerate bananas, and then after you take rifaximin and now you can eat bananas, a year later, you can't tolerate bananas again. Or if it's abdominal pain, the abdominal pain comes back. Or your anxiety, the anxiety comes back. All right, you gotta look for it. And I tell people, when you get your uh, kind of fingerprint, and even parents of your kids, when you're, if you're treating your kids, you're gonna forget. You gotta write it down somewhere. So often I'll tell people, just put it in your phone, okay? Put it in a contact under your kid's name or something like that. So a year from now you go, God, what was that they had? You can go look it up and you'll be like, oh my gosh, that's the same thing. Now, if these symptoms are coming back, the other thing that I talk about in the book is you wanna wait about a week, to two weeks before you decide this is truly SIBO because actually I've had some people where uh, their symptoms go away, they're doing great. Now maybe they just get a little virus that gives them some diarrhea and a little heartburn, but that'll go away in a day or two, okay? Three at most. But if your symptoms are weak, 10 days, 14 days, or, or, or your child's symptoms, then you know, and they're matching your fingerprint, you know, uh-oh, I just lost my reset and I need another 10 days of Zyfaxin. All right, so it's very important Mark your, your SIBO symptom uh, fingerprint, put it down somewhere safe, like in the contact of your phone or something like that, wherever you want, and use that, because you're gonna need that 
in the future to help you determine whenever you have relapses. All right, hope that's helpful. Uh, Dr. Patrick Nemechek, Nemechek Autonomic Medicine, Buckeye, Arizona. Have a great one.